What, Ed? In the headlines again, eh? Yeah. It was a great game. You should have been there. Well, son, I'm mighty proud of you and all that. The battle of life is being fought with brains, not brawn. Here I am, up to my ears, trying to look after our cattle and mining interests. Now, uh, don't you think it's about time I was getting a little help from you? I know how you feel, Dad. I wasn't cut out to sit behind a desk. I'd go nutty. I have to keep moving. If you want to make a success in life, you've got to keep the brain moving. Here's where you belong, young man, right here. Don't you know that somebody has got to look after this business when I'm gone? All right. I'll take a crack at it just to please you. But I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. No, no, I'm not. Mighty strange I don't hear anything from Jake Gibbons. Who's Jake Gibbons? Well, he's our best mining engineer. You know, the returns from our Sunset Mine haven't been very satisfactory the last few months. So I sent Jake down to investigate. Oh, I see. Oh, by the way, if old grouchy hi-hat clicket comes in, handle him with gloves. It's the biggest deal of the year, and I can't afford to lose it. Of course, Dad. I'll take care of him. Fine. Is Mr. Bannister in? Senior or junior? A uh, junior. Yes, go right in. Hello, Bannister. Hi, Bob. Howdy, fellas. Come on, lock up the joint. Let's go for a workout. Sorry, boys, but I can't do it. I'm expecting some big business. <laughs> hey! That's the joke. Right over here. the meaning of this young man? Why did you come here to be insulted? Well, I'm not so sure. You've got a chip on your shoulder wherever you go. Bob. All you want is a chance to yell and swing your cane at somebody. You know it was an accident knocking your head off, but you haven't got man enough in you to admit it. Now listen, old crumple puss. You get out of here before I forget you're a grandfather. Bob, that's enough. It ought to be. Good day. I want you to know, young fellow, that you can't insult my... There's an important telegram here for you, Dad. You'd better read it. But, yes, uh, I... Uh... Hmm. Why don't you send me down there? That's a good way to get rid of me. This is a man's job. But I'll get rid of you, all right. Go on home. You're fired. Fine. I'll see you at dinner. Nice going, Clickett. It was perfect. I'm fired. Yeah, but it wasn't in the bargain to bust my hat. That's all right. I'll send you a new one. All right, son. Now I'm going to tell him, so long as he keeps you out of the office, I'll consider talking business with him. That's the idea. Clickett, you're a pal. I'll never forget it. <laughs> I don't care how you get him, but get him. Your best bet would be the polo grounds. Put him in a freight car. Lock the door. I'll wire the boys to take him out at Preston. Maybe they can pound some sense into him. Right. and craves the outdoors. See that he gets plenty of it. Bannister. Just a minute, kid. Oh. 
Where am I? You're in the boxcar. Well, how'd I get here? I don't know. Somebody told you. Aren't you Spike Grogan? That's me. Say, I seen you someplace before, too. I banished it. I seen you fight candy. Shake. That's a coincidence. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, what are you doing here? Well, you see the fight racket and the wrestling racket went on the bum. They're all afraid of me. I can't get a look in. So I figured I'd head south and see what was doing. We're heading south, huh? Yeah. Where'd you get this? Out of your coat there. What a dad's practical joke, huh? Well, they got me all right, but it took six of them to do it. How would you like to make a hundred bucks? Don't play with me. Say, I'd wrestle a grease walrus for a hundred bucks. Can you ride? Ride? Why, I used to break bronze for the army. Say, I can ride anything what's got a tail. Okay. You're taking my place. <laughs> I like your outfit very much. Take it off. What's your game, hombre? You'll find out later. Take it off. Well, thanks for the transportation anyway, hombre. You go loose. Follow. Down that way. Here he comes now. Please don't be alarmed, but I'm being mistaken for someone else. There's a posse after me. Do you mind if I hide here? Under here.
Teresa, they say they'll catch you out route in the vicinity. Lock your doors. He's around here somewhere. There's his horse. Come on. What's all the excitement? Well, we'll run down that Apache. He's around here somewhere. We'll try and take him alive, Sheriff. Well, if it's possible. Oh, here's Mr. Kevin Cade. I want you to treat him with a little more respect. Why should I? I hate him. Don't be a fool. The money your father left you is just about gone. If you don't marry him, we'll all go to the poorhouse. We'd be better off. As my guardian, I'm supposed to bow to your demand. But there is a limit to everything. Understand this, Aunt Cynthia. I am choosing my own husband. <laughs> Quick, Senor Americano. Thanks. Adios. Adios. Who are you? That way. Help me out of this, will you? Oh, what the... Hey, what's the matter with you? Where are your drawers on the outside? Never mind that. Just get me out of this. Boy, what a time I've had. Well, I had a pretty good time myself. You know, this ain't a bad roost after all. The food's great, and the dame what cooks it is some baby. <laughs> well, maybe I can fix you up with a steady job here. That'll be swell. They've been chasing me all over the country. They think I'm a bandit. A bandit? Yeah. Let me see those clothes on the wall there, Spike. What's this? Keep Gibbons in cave until further order. We'll see you at Cantina. Sign KK. Gibbons? Well, he's our lost mining engineer. Spike, this note was signed by Ken Cade. Our engineer held a prisoner here. We've got to find him and get him out. I wonder where this Ken Cade lives. I don't know. I'm just a stranger here. Well, I know someone who can tell us. We'll find out tonight. Forcing me to marry Senor Kincaid day after tomorrow. Day after tomorrow? Well, don't worry. If what I surmise is true, Kincaid will be in jail day after tomorrow. In jail? Yes. 
I know that in some way he is connected with the disappearance of our mining engineer. You see, Kincaid is superintendent of my dad's mine. Oh, then you are Senor Bonister. Yes. Oh, see, I know now. I can see your picture in the paper. You ride the horse and hit the ball, <laughs> no? We call that polo. But uh, what brought you down here, Senor Bonister? I came here to try and locate our missing engineer. Do you know where Kincaid lives? Well, I am not sure, but once I see him go in the house right next to the cantina, you know, the one with the big stone porch. I'm very anxious to have a talk with him. Well, anyway, there's one thing certain. You'll never have to marry Kincaid. That is a promise, senor? That's a promise. Adios. Adios, senor. Send him over here. Hey, Joe. The boss wants you. So you didn't connect this time, eh? No, the sheriff surprised me just as the stage came. And they chased you? Yeah, but they give him the slip. Me to Humbly and change clothes with him, and the sheriff chased him. And just as I thought. Well, he got away. And if I'm not mistaken, it was the banister kid you changed clothes with. We better lay low until we get rid of him. That's the kid there, isn't it? See, it is he who changed clothes with him. Listen, Apache, clean up the place with him, and we get him out of the way for a few days. See. <laughs> oh, there, outlaw. A nice little trick you played on me this morning. What do you mean? I don't act dumb, Apache. And besides, I want my clothes. You're liable to get something you don't want. Yeah? <laughs> on him. Who are you? Why don't you know? Look. Huh. So you Spike Grogan, the wrestler? Sure, that's me. What are you doing here? Well, you see, I was on my way to Los Angeles and I went broke. Say, you don't know how a guy could pick up a little change to see him through. You mean wrestling? Anything. 
What's it worth to you to put him on the sick list for a few days? If I wasn't busted, it'd be a pleasure. That's one palooka I ain't got no use for. Well, here's 50 bucks. But I'm expecting you to do a good job. Leave it to me. I'll get him when he comes out. I'll wait for him outside. Say, what do I do with him after I smear him? I'll see that he's taken care of. But you be sure you put him out. Listen, Chief. You don't know the half of it. Pretty good. <laughs> Had a lot of fun. What do you have? Yeah, Give me yeah. some buttermilk. What's that? Don't you follow me? I said buttermilk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get it? Don't you follow me? Oh, I get it. He wants buttermilk. Oh, buttermilk. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I think you're all nuts. <laughs> 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 Say, kid, Kincaid just give me 50 bucks to beat up on you. How are you going to get out of this? That's a cinch. We'll let Apache take my place. How's Apache? Oh, he'll be all right. Well, when I give the signal, you'll find the Bannister kid outside. Take him over to the mine and throw him in with Gibbons. We gotta follow them. They're supposed to throw you in with a guy named Gibbons. Gibbons? Why, he's the lost engineer. Tell him everything's okay, Spike, and I'll wait for you. You better hurry. I got him tied up and he's out cold as an icicle. All right, boys. Be sure you don't slip up on this. Come on, Gibbon. Let's clear out of here. Do you think you could get that swell cookie artist to rustle us up some grub? That's a swell idea, fella. Leave that to me. I'll bring you a layout fit for a king. Mr. 
Gibbons, I want you to tell me just what happened. Well, as you know, boy, I was sent down here to investigate conditions at the mine. I accidentally discovered Kincaid had been shipping out some high grade. How'd you get it out? Why, a uh, secret tunnel through the mountain, opened out on Mexican territory. You know, borderline runs right by the edge of your dad's holdings. Well, how could he do that without some of the boys here that are loyal to dad finding it out? Those men were fired over a month ago. Kincaid's been working his own crew. I also discovered that in drilling a new shaft to the second level, Kincaid ran into a sort of placer pocket of almost pure gold. It's very unusual finding a deposit of this kind in our formation. I questioned Kincaid about what I had discovered. He immediately had me imprisoned in the cave. If you hadn't released me, I suppose I'd have stayed there until Kincaid had cleaned out the pocket and skipped the country. How did you know my imprisonment? Curtis here at the ranch wired Dad that you'd mysteriously disappeared. Anyway, we've got Kincaid just about where we want him. What did I tell you? Cast your peepers over that. And the queen what cooks it is some chicken herself. It looks like this is getting mighty serious, right? What do you think, Gibbon? Sure is. <laughs> Listen, gents. You don't know the half of it. And if the kid here will fix me up, I'll be willing to wrestle steers the rest of my life. <laughs> boy, oh boy. You're absolutely sure that she knows nothing about this money? Absolutely nothing. I have managed to keep that part from her. It states explicitly that at the day she is married, she received $80,000 in cash and the deed of her grandfather's estate in Mexico. Business reasons makes it necessary for me to leave town and go to Mexico City tomorrow night. I've arranged with the Justice of Peace to marry us at my residence tomorrow morning. To make sure there will be no delays or interference in the matter, I suggest that Teresa and yourself be me to my residence tonight. You will be quite comfortable. It will also give you a chance to get in communication with those concerned in the transfer of the money. Don't worry about that. As I told you before, there will be an immediate settlement. The money will be there at the time of the marriage. That you and I are to divide this money equally. That's understood, Mr. Kincaid. However, it will take $1,000 to make an immediate transfer of the money. <laughs> I think you're getting off cheap. And what are your plans after the marriage? I will take Teresa to Mexico City with me. Give her the deeds to her grandfather's estate and send her there. And then? She can get her divorce any time she so desires. Very well. I'll have Teresa get ready at once. Teresa. Yes, Aunt Sophia? Uh, I want to have a little talk with you. Uh, uh, upon your traveling suit, dear, we're taking a little trip into Mexico. At uh, this time of the night? Yes. We're stopping over in town for the night, but however, we'll catch the train in the morning. A trip to Mexico City. Won't oh, that be wonderful? <laughs> Hurry now, we have only time to lose. Si, señorita. First square meal I've had in days. You are Senior Bannister, no? Yes, I'm Bannister. I have an important message for you.
Do you know where Kincaid lives? Si, si, senor. Good. Spike, we've got a busy day ahead of us tomorrow. Now, well, what's the idea of waking a man up in the middle of the night? Important wire, or what is it? My son going to marry the ranch cook in the morning. That's all? Well, ain't that enough? Great heavens, what next? Well, Bannister, I'm glad you looked me up and explained everything. I think you've got this figured out just about right. That telegram we sent Dad last night should have brought some action. <laughs> Did you be down? I bet he's halfway here right now. <laughs> I haven't seen anything of them, eh? Well, that's mighty strange. But if you see anything of the wrestlers, send him right over. You're up early, Cynthia. It's a habit. How's Teresa? Still asleep. Hmm. Well, we've very short time before that man is due. Perhaps you'd better wait, you didn't. Teresa, and inform her that today is her wedding day. Shall we have breakfast out? Find out what Teresa would like, and I'll have it sent over. Spike, they won't suspicion you. Go over and see what you can find out. Sure. Teresa, I have something I want to talk to you about. Before you tell me, Aunt Cynthia, I have a surprise for you. I have found someone I really love. And if he asks me, I am going to marry him. But here's the big surprise. And when I marry, I'm going to inherit my grandfather's rancho. Also about $80,000 in cash. Teresa, who has told you all this? I have known it for some time, Aunt Cynthia. And when I marry, I am going to give you the Mendoza Rancho, which is worth far more than the money I will receive. It will be for you to uphold the honor and good name of the Mendoza family. You see, Auntie, we are the only two that is left. Teresa, I've made a terrible mistake. That's all right, Auntie. We all make mistakes. That fight is out here. You want to see him? Yes, send him in. Well, what happened to you? I went up to the mine to help the boys put that palooka in the cave. Where's Apache Joe and the men? Say, those punks can sleep longer than Rip Van Winkle. I left them up the mine. Well, I've got another job for you, and it's worth 500 berries here. But you've got to skip town as soon as you get paid. 500 berries? Say, I'll leave here so fast you won't even see me. Well, now there's a man coming here with a package. Or maybe a grip. But whatever it is, you get it. And get him, too. And as soon as you give me the package, I'll give you the 500 smackers. Now, you better plant yourself out there and watch your step. For he's probably got a gun. I'll take care of that. But now we must get out of here quick. Yes, if it isn't already too late. The 
Did you see any sign of the girl? Not a sign. But there's a guy coming up here with a grip or something. I'm supposed to slip in the KO and get it, for which I received 500 smackers. Hmm. Well, this is the sheriff's job. You can stop him. Find out why he's here and what's in the grip. Yes, it's a good idea. Come on. Yes? Let us out. I'll let you out, Cynthia, when it's time. All ready to leave, eh, Louis? Oui, monsieur. Well, there'll be no need of a wedding now. In just a few minutes, we'll be 80,000 smackers to the good. Just a minute. For your own protection, I'd like to know just who you are and what you've got in that grip. I have here the last will and testament of the late Sino Don Alvarado Mendoza, whose daughter is to be married to King K, the superintendent of the Sunset Mine. I also have here some money which Teresa Mendoza is to receive as a wedding present. <laughs> I'm the legal advisor and the executor of the Mendoza estate, and I was told to get here promptly with the money. Well, Kincaid hired a man to waylay and rob you. Now, you better get that bag back over to your office and put the money in the safe. Uh, yeah, I, sh I surely will. So thanks very much. They're loose, pronto. The sheriff has Kincaid's place around. Come, quick. I wish I knew whether Miss Mendoza was in there. I'll go back and stall. Maybe I can locate her. Yes? Listen, boss. That guy with the derby hat and the banister kid is working together. They forced us in the cave and released Gibbons. We just dug ourselves out and raced here to help you, but the banister and his gang, including the sheriff, they have got the place surrounded. Well, where's the buckboard? Well, get it ready. And I'll go out the back way. And race for the mine. And I'll get through the tunnel and into Mexican territory, and they can't touch me there. That fight is here again. Get him in. And when you see your chance, get him from behind. For he's double-crossed us out of everything. Got a drink handy? Sure. Get on up high, Corbin. Get him out of sight. I'm going to have a look around the building, Sheriff. here. Take this gun. If you get a chance, you can get the drop on him. And don't be afraid to use it. I, I won't. I'll find a way to get in. Louis, they can't hold you for anything. I'm going to try to make it across the border, and I'll meet you in Mexico City. Very well. Teresa.
You're a fool, monsieur. I'm going to cut you to ribbons. Good. On guard, Frenchy. All right, sir. We're after King Jake. Come on. Hi. What's the matter, baby? What you doing here? I heard you were in trouble and I came to help you. Let me go. Go.
Are you all right, Teresa? Si, Senor Vaughn. Oh, look! Well, Dad, you certainly broke a record getting down here. Yes. Gibbons here has told me about Tim Cade. Where is he? He's probably wearing wings by now. Or horns. What's this about marrying Amelia? She changed her mind, Chief, when she spotted me. Dad, I want you to meet your future daughter-in-law. Well, son, there's one thing certain. You've inherited your father's good judgment. <laughs> oh, oh, Senor Bob, you have not yet even proposed. Proposed? Baloney, that's an old-fashioned idea. If you'll marry me now, I'll propose to you on our golden wedding anniversary. You said they promised me a merry That's a promise. <laughs> 